Hey guys, welcome back to the Film Bros Podcast. I know that this is... Uh, it's a little different. Uh, yeah, a little different <laughs> of an intro than you guys are used to. But we had some big audio issues with the episode for My Neighbor Totoro, which yeah. is very unfortunate. So um, <laughs> for the people who are listening or who do listen mainly on the audio platforms via you know Apple Podcasts or Spotify or anything like that, um, if you want the episode... Uh, with a little bit lesser of audio quality than what you're normally used to, I'd recommend going over to the YouTube channel. Yeah, YouTube will have it. That's something we were yeah, able to that's salvage. That's something that we were able, yes, that we were able to salvage was the footage that we did film for My Neighbor Totoro. Yes. Um, but the, yeah, the audio is just shot. So we're mm. unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's like an hour of our time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we'll never get back. Oh god! It is what it is. It happens. It was bound to happen one time. Yeah. What are we? Ninety episodes in. This is ninety. I, I think. F- yeah. Wow. So yeah. I uh, figured it had to happen at some point. I said it was sorry that it was on your episode. It's all right. Um, yeah. but it's still there if you do want to. Uh, we have something listen, for you. Listen guys. through yeah. the YouTube. I guess we could do a whole. You can reveal your pick if they don't want to. Uh, to go through all that. If you okay. Re- redo your pick here. Yeah, so if you don't want to check out the, <laughs> the YouTube episode, we're going to be doing another episode uh, next week on There Will Be Blood. It's a film by Paul Thomas Anderson, and it is streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Yes. So if you want to check it out and you have that streaming service, go check it out. Or if you want to rent it or if you want to pick up a copy, go do so. Check that movie out and tune in next week to hear what we have to say about There Will Be Blood. Yeah. yeah. As always, this has been the Film Bros Podcast. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Good night. Good night. Welcome back, everybody, to the Film Bros Podcast. My name is Isaiah Lucas, and I'm joined by my co-hosts. Abraham and Nick. How are you guys doing tonight? Dude, you're not a lot of energy, I guess. I know. They heard. We yeah. were just seeing the national I anthem. I the national yeah. anthem. Uh, what else is this? <laughs> <laughs> we should... <laughs> <laughs> There's a fly in here. We have a lot of energy tonight. I don't know why. Yeah. I think I know why. What? It's both yours and my birthday week. Yeah. Coming up soon. It's true. Big celebration. Yeah. Hey. Break your time. Come on! Already get claimed. Oh, no. Five <laughs> seconds only, bro. Yeah. That was the best five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to be a singer, so they can't even know what I'm singing. Yeah. How was your day? How's your day? My brain is working, or my mouth is working faster than my brain today. Uh, my day's been good. It was a little bit of a slow day at work, but picked up a little bit towards the end, so that was nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. You? I had a very fine day. Good. I wanted to get home though because Iowa 16 came out and I was like, damn, oh, I get it. I got I I downloaded Iowa 16 probably like 2 o'clock today and then texted both of you guys because I immediately was like, this is amazing, this is beautiful. Yeah, I downloaded it while I was at work. You see, I wanted to do that but there was no Wi Fi. Yeah, I had Wi Fi and my charger. So oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm Did it take you me. forever too? Yeah. It took me about an hour. A long time. Dude, just the preparing stage, yeah, I, the preparing. I had it on my charger and I was like, Yes. I was like, why did it take so long? So long. Has it moved an inch? Yeah. Um, Cause it took like five minutes to download. I think for me. Yeah. And then it took super long preparing. Yeah. But I was really anticipating that, so my day went by quickly. That's good. I did get a notification though that it told me it warned me not to download iOS 16, but 15.7. You said your phone's gonna blow up or slow down. I guess was what people said. Mm-hmm. Probably. Uh, I need yeah. a phone. Anyways. No. <laughs> Steve Jobs' daughter literally tweeted out saying that the iOS 14 is exactly like the same 13. But at 13, just a little, little different Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not really meant for people going from 13 to 14. It's more yeah. like people going from the 8 to the 14. Or yeah. the X. I want the X. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it's still a good. If it's still working for you, I say stay. If yeah. not, got good ones. It's not going to be any problems. It's not going to be any problems, but I definitely do want a new phone. Mm-hmm. I've had this phone for almost three years. So I think it's time. I don't want rose gold phone anymore. Mm. Yeah, get your neck out anymore. I don't think I don't think I'm part of the. Cool the rose gold. gold that you're actually unique because that doesn't. That's yeah, not. I don't make rose gold anymore. Yeah, that's not common. And yeah. I got this one for cheap. That's a whole story. That's a whole story. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, talking about stories, we've got a, a story today. Ab, what did we watch? We watched um, our first anime movie. Um, it's called My Neighbor Toto. It was written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki. Mm-hmm. I, was trying, I was yeah. trying to 
get it on. Um, it came out in 1988, which I thought was yeah, crazy. I blew my mind a little yeah. bit. When I saw the release date on HBO Max, I was like, holy cow, this came out in 88? Uh, and I was talking to my brother Sal because he was here when I watched it. I was like, there's no way this one came out in 88. I thought it came out like 90 something mm -hmm. at least. But then I was like, no, it came out in 88. But yeah, this is the movie we watched. Aren't you guys, was this your first time watching it? Yes, this was my first time watching My Neighbor Totoro. I've watched other Studio Ghibli films, but this was my first uh, first watch for this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was my first completion. I did like 20 minutes before we started this, and uh, I paused it for some reason. I think another movie was out that I was curious about. Oh, okay, yeah. So I, I didn't even get to uh, Totoro. I didn't oh, even yeah. know where this guy came into the story at all. So, <laughs> but, hey. That's why I said it might have been earlier than yeah. 20 minutes, but yeah, I finished it. Nice. Today. What about you? my second time, I think. Actually, yeah, my second time. I remember I was watching um, a friend's kid with someone, and they were like, oh, can you watch this movie? And I was like, yeah. So then, but it was probably four years ago that I've seen it. Oh, okay. God. So I didn't remember much of this movie. Okay. It was basically nice. like my first watch. I'm guessing you would rate it lower than some of the other ones? Because I feel yes, like we, we I... don't talk about this one as often as other films. No, and... There's, there's a little controversy, I feel like, because a lot of people say this one is the director's best film. And mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. And I think there's other people who don't agree with that. I think... I'm one of them. I'm yeah. one of them. I, mean, I don't think it's bad, because I think there's other ones. Like, Spirit Away is one of the goaded ones, I think. Yeah. Um, and Ponyo, I really love Ponyo. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the only ones that I've really seen. I've seen Kiki Delivery Shows once, mm -hmm. but I don't remember it. So I can't really say which one's the goaded one. Um, so but I will say My Neighbor Totoro is a good one. I wouldn't say it's his worst, I wouldn't say it's his best. No, well, yeah. I, I might not have, I don't have enough to know. I, it's, pro it's definitely the worst of the ones I've seen. Uh, my favorite one being Princess Mononoke. That one is so sick. That's what my brother was saying, he said that one's pretty good. That one's awesome. Okay, uh, that's one I've yet to watch. It does everything that this movie tries to do, but uh, like better. better, with more action and more like ripping story. Okay. Um, it's slightly different, but I, I like that one. And it's not to say that this one's bad, because I think all of them are pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Just just in the art style alone, and the style of it, mm -hmm. I think elevates this movie beyond pretty much any other animated movie. I mean, like, you, there's no, you cannot be hand-drawn art. No, this is not at all. gorgeous. Yeah. And I think everyone will agree. Yeah. 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 And it, I, what, it blew my mind that it was released in 1988, and when I watched it, I was like, there's no, like, this... Looks like it could be a film that came out in 2000, 2008, or like that time, mm -hmm. because it looks so clean, it looks so clear. Um, so that's what one thing that really blew my mind, and something that really did for me. Yeah. For me. Yeah, I think that's one thing that hand drawn animation does. Is it oh. always it always stands the test of time. Mm -hmm. Cannot be beaten, dude. That's yeah. it, it. Especially the uh, like attention to detail too. Yeah. Like with how the shadows cast down. Yeah. How yeah. they display movement with the yeah. foreground and background. It's. It's awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. It's so much like real life, but just with this beautiful art, art style. Yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah. So that's that's one of the reasons why just Studio Ghibli in general, I think, captivates its audience because it's you just watch it and you're like, gosh, this is yeah, it's insane. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous. And this one I feel like is more of a you just want to throw it on to get a, a mood. You want to yeah. be in a vibe. You want to be comfy. Yeah, you just yeah. want to feel warm. And, not necessarily watch the movie, but you just want to like feel like you got a hug on. Yeah. My my cousin Julian was here when I also watched it as well, and he goes, "This is a movie that I could throw on and just take a nap too." Right. Yeah. yeah. And so he's like, "Why are you putting this on?" And he's like, "I could fall asleep right now." I was like, "It's a good movie." Yeah. Good movie. Well, with that being said, what's this movie about? This movie's about two little girls who are moving to the countryside to be near their alien mother, um, and they just start exploring around this new house they live in and they get um, into some adventures with the four spirits around their house. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty much, much it. That's that's it. Simple, straight to the point, and that's yeah. it. So with that being said, if you have yet to check this movie out, go check it out on HBO Max. That's where it's streaming currently. Or if you, you know, have a copy or if you want to you know, have HBO Max and you got to rent it somewhere, check it out and tune back in and see you what we thought about My Neighbor Totoro. All right, you want to start us off with your first favorite scene? Yeah, um, my first favorite scene is a little, I almost at 10 minutes in the house, uh, 
into the movie. Um, the dad, I don't really remember his name, um, but he tells the two little girls who are named May and I'm going to butcher the name, which I'm sorry. It is Tasuki? Satsuki. Yeah. Satsuki. <laughs> Satsuki. And the dad tells them, hey, go upstairs and to, or go try to find the upstairs. They can't find it, open all the windows. And we get into the sequence of just them going through every door in the house, in and out. And I just love the house design, one. It, to me, it's super cool. And I just love to see this because you can tell the chemistry that the sisters have. They're like, they're their, each other's best friends. Yes. And I love that. And they're all that they've got, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, but yeah, it's, it's definitely cute watching them run around the house and like try to find the stairs. Yeah. And like wondering where all these soot sprites are coming from, yeah. or soot spirits. And um, I've, I've definitely had moments like that, like with my brothers. Mm -hmm. where like, move into a new house and we're like, oh, it's so big. And mm -hmm. like, you know, just so excited about being somewhere new and all that stuff. You try to run and get to your, this is my room, this yeah, is my room. Yeah, it's I got into this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it definitely reminds you of your childhood. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. and it was funny too, it kind of, uh, uh, characterizes May a little bit because she's she's always behind. She's always just a little bit like slippery. Like she's, yeah. she's not as as uh, old yeah. as uh, Satsuki, obviously. So it's it's cute to see them like her try to tag along. And and yeah. I was that brother that always tagged tagged along with my older brothers and just like was kind of like a leech. Yeah, that's kind of like your role model. I mean, you yeah. kind of just like you don't you don't know how to do anything, so you look to your your family. Yeah. Uh, which she definitely was the embodiment of that, honestly. Yeah, watching this movie and and how the two sisters interact with one another reminded me of my niece and nephew, mm -hmm. and um, it reminded me like of the older one my, being my niece and how you know strong-willed and determined she is and like how bossy she can be mm -hmm. at some points, and then the younger sister always following in her footsteps and copying everything she does. Like, yep. My nephew does the exact same thing and is like always doing something that his sister is doing alongside him and you know they're always just hanging out with one another and playing and yeah, it definitely uh, made me think of you know, not only my childhood but also you know, the people in my life as yeah, well. For sure. Yeah it was cute. I enjoyed uh, them running around the house and all that stuff. Um, it also introduced us to these, to these soot spirits. And you, at first you're like well, what the heck? Shouldn't yeah. you be like terrified? Your house is haunted. Literally, yeah. literally, it was spiders at first. They, they look they like, like spiders, or almost as um, like sea urchins or something. Sea urchins, yeah, yeah. like something. That's what I was looking for. Usually, you see something at a house, and it immediately turns into like a paranormal activity movie. You're yeah. like, all right, we gotta get you out. Yeah. But this is yeah. different. You know, they go up, they they open the door, and they see those dark stairs, and they literally say, "It's pitch black," and they just run in there. They yeah. run in there like they're determined. They get in there, they open the window, and they're like, "Dad." There's spirits, or there's like little soot monsters there's in here. And then the dad goes, "Oh great, I've always wanted to live in a haunted house." Yeah. So you immediately get this move, like this feeling that this is gonna be a very comforting movie. Yeah. It's not the movie that's gonna terrify you or make you scared of these weird spirits haunting them. Yeah. It's more of like, no, these spirits are really friendly. Yeah. They're just here, and then you, you, we even get the grandma explaining what the soot spirits are. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, they're here, and they're they're probably out there right now uh, talking about. If they should leave or not, mm -hmm. you know, they they're yeah. uh, judging your character. If you're yeah. good, then they'll leave. Which I thought was really cute, and it's just introducing us very to these small little sit spirits. And we're like, okay, well, if they exist, obviously, then where's Tolter going to yeah. fit in here? There's other things that will exist yeah. as well, and they they're, they're not going to be scared. Yeah, I like the flipping of the script here because I don't know about you guys when they show that that shot of the stairs and it goes up into the attic and it's pitch black. Yeah, I immediately was like. Oh hell no! I'm, not, <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm, jumping I'm, not, I'm not going up there. Yeah, like, I'm scared of that. I'm not doing that. You know, but these girls conquer that fear and they go up there and they let the light in and stuff. Yeah. And they the whole time they flip their the script on like, you know what, a you know a spirit is or what a ghost is or you know something that is haunted and it, how it doesn't always necessarily have to be bad. Yep. And um, I, I enjoyed that aspect of it and I definitely think that's something that like can also like take the power away of something scary, especially oh, yeah. whenever you're a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what, one of the things that I kind of liked too about like uh, that scene where the dad was like, if something's scary, you just just laugh. And he starts going, ah, ah. So it's like, yeah, it just starts laughing. That was a bro moment for me because he just laughed out of nowhere. Yeah. And it just 
I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, me either. But whenever he was like, he explains, and they're like, what are you doing? And he's like, well, if something's scary to you, just kind of laugh at it, and then, you know, it won't be scary to you anymore. Yeah. And then his girls kind of start falling into it, and they all have this, like, you know, this fun time where they just bond with one another, and it turns cute. Yeah. You know? The bear, this is a very wholesome father. Yeah. Because especially when we get the whole situation of, like, you know that the mom is sick and she's away. We don't necessarily understand like what it is that's making her sick, but she can't be with her family. Yes. So he, now he has a way more responsibility, and he's not. It's not going to be the movie where the dad's like pulling his hair out, ripping it out, and being stressed about having to take care of kids. He's already like well, well connected. He is already like is extremely used to his role now. So I think all all of this introduction just solidifies this movie as feeling like, I feel good. Yeah. Because you have a great father, you have this beautiful new home, you know that the mom is right down the way in the hospital that they can go to see, like, you have these nice spirits, you have the granny is here, like, yeah. everything here is aiding to that feeling of just like, I'm gonna sit a here. Big, warm hug. Yeah, like, like it's winter time and you have a cup of coffee and yeah. blanket around you and you're watching this movie. Yeah. Honestly, that's exactly how I envision it. Yeah. Um, which I, and I, I Think it's good. I mean, yeah. the, the first act is really it gets you to set up everything. Yeah. yeah. And they do it exactly how I feel like they wanted to. So yeah. My next or well, my first favorite scene I'll say is whenever May meets Totoro. Yeah. Like, this one's cool. Time. Yeah. And um, she does so by you know she I think she's playing outside by herself. Um, I believe that Satsuki is at school yes. at this time, so she's like with Granny, and. Um, She's playing outside and stuff and everything, or something like that, I believe. And then yeah, I think she's just out. She's just outside by herself. Her dad's at home working. Oh, okay. And yeah, she, she's picking flowers. She's picking flowers. For yes, her. that's she's correct. Like, that's correct. Flower shop. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's cute, right? Like she's you know coming up and saying, you know, here you're gonna be part of this game that I'm making up with you. And yeah. It's like okay, and he's just kind of working at home. And um, she discovers this little like spirit thing that like it looks like a rabbit or something it, like we assume at first. And, Oh, I yeah, thought it was like, a wolf coming out. I thought it was a bunny hopping through the hopping through the grass, and all of a sudden we walk out. It walks out, and you know it's a little baby totem, and it's just kind of walking, and she sees it, and she's like, "Whoa, whoa, what the heck is this?" Yeah. You know, uh, I think she tries to like go up to it, and it vanishes or something. Yeah. And, you know, it reappears again. And mm -hmm. She ends up following it and going through like on this like huge adventure, going through this tunnel of branches and. You know, bushes and trees, and like all through the throughout this forest, and then eventually, like climbs around in on this tree and falls and stumbles onto Totoro's like resting place where yeah. he sleeps. And um, I just loved the whole uh, reveal of Totoro and him just being just this like she falls she falls down this hole and then we look over and we just see like this big gray blob. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, and, like, and it's got like a tail like just sitting out there so it's like obviously his butt is facing outward. And we just see like this thing just going... Breathing. Like breathing and going in and out expanding and yeah. the tracking and all this stuff. And, um, she eventually goes up, to, uh, goes up to it and kind of like touches it and that's when Totoro flips around and he's on his back now. And we get to see like it's this huge like creature it, it, you know, it looks like a bear yeah it's like a, it's like a bear like it's almost like a rabbit too i don't know how to describe it it's just unique yeah it's it's very unique and for some reason may yeah. starts climbing on it yeah and uh the See? first thing the first thing i said whenever whenever i saw how big totoro was and how fluffy he looked was man i want to lay on him yeah like i want to yeah. like just I lay on his belly. Yeah. I even told my brother, I said, that kind of reminds me of a Snorlax. Yeah. Oh, it does. Yes. It does. And a Snorlax with fur. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. I just want to lay on it, like you said. Yeah. But um, she eventually gets on top of him and, you know, starts messing around with him and stuff and everything. And um, she wants, she's curious. She wants to know what this thing is. Mm -hmm. And Totoro is, like, sleeping. He keeps falling in and out of sleep. and Opening his eyes, like, barely. Yeah. And then we'll, like fall back asleep and then finally he wakes up and I believe May says like my name is May what's your name dude I and did not expect his voice me either I thought, I thought it was gonna be, be like a tiny little like guy like to like maybe like poke fun at how big he is yeah but he straight up goes Toto -do! <laughs> it's so it's so deep too yeah and it's it it's big and 
it kind of blows my mind that like whenever he like screams or like growls or yells, like yeah. no one else hears it. Mm -hmm. Because that, he's got a voice, yeah. for sure. But um, yeah, I just, I enjoyed just the whole first interaction and immediately how safe May felt with mm -hmm. Totoro and just, you know, just this immediate bond that the two have with one another. And it was very cute. It was very cute. I am thinking about it now because we all watched it in the dubbed version when they did speak in English. Yes. But I wonder how it would sound with the sub version. Yeah. Because I know it's a different voice actor for Totoro. So I imagine... I don't know how, I don't know how he, uh, he I, I think he did a great job, but yeah. it'd be interesting. Yeah, I, I think that this is one too where like, people, people, you, a lot of the times people will say that the dubs are bad. Trash, yeah. Like they're, they're trash and you gotta watch the subs to like really understand or like feel the emotion yeah. behind things. But I was reading a lot of the reviews on Letterboxd and people actually like praise the dub version of this film and say that like this is like, one of the very few where the dub like gets it right. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And so that made me feel good because I immediately went into that too because I've watched other anime, and I watched like I think I watched One Punch Man, in, all in... in English dub. Oh really? Yeah. And then I went back and watched it in the sub version, and I I knew it immediately what everyone was talking about. And I was like, this sounds so much better. Like it it adds so much more uh, comedy to certain scenes yeah. or. Um, so much more like emotional weight to certain things when you can actually hear like the inflections of someone's how it's how it's, how it's supposed to be made yeah. you know? and then you know when you when you translate some words some things get lost and yeah. you know it's not always as impactful yeah so. I definitely agree normally I try to do like imagine watching uh, Parasite in in really? dub no I, I it would be so I weird couldn't. yeah I couldn't do it I don't think I could do it either I don't think it would flow as well no but There's no way normally I enjoy the sub version but yeah I went for the dub and I I, I think I'm, I'm I'm so confident in Hayao Miyazaki and just the Studio Ghibli company that they can do the dub just as good as the the sub and, and we wouldn't lose anything for it yeah so every time I think of Studio Ghibli I don't even think of oh which one do I watch which one do I watch I just I just put Spirited Away or I put yeah. Princess Mononoke and which the first one that pops up I know it's gonna be good yeah um, so I guess we didn't even say that. It's normally that's a sticking point with people. They're like, "Oh, if you watched the dub version, you didn't watch it at all." Yeah. Like, How do I do it? Yeah. Uh, but I don't think it's like that for this movie. Uh, I don't think it's that like that for any of the movies. No, I don't think so. But yeah. My last favorite scene is meeting Toro again at the bus stop. Yeah, that's mine as well. Okay. Um, and basically, so we get this little scene. A little backstory of the scene is. Um, I keep on wanting to say Satsuki. Satsuki. Okay. Satsuki's at school and May's staying with Granny. And the dad is at home at the university. He's a university, university teacher and he's working. So that's why May has to stay with Granny. And um, she basically was like not having a good time on the scene. And makes Granny take May to school with her Satsuki dad. And um, so basically, she gets to stay here at school, and they eventually go back home, and it's raining and it's pouring. And Tasuke realizes that their dad forgot the umbrella, so she's going to wait at the bus stop for, with him, or with the umbrella for him. And then, so May was like, you should probably, May was supposed to stay with Granny, but she didn't, she ended up going. And this is where, so they're just standing there, so they're just, they're just standing there, not even talking. And... She starts falling asleep, and that kid's like, get on my back, like, I'll carry you, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then out of nowhere, Toto shows up. Out of nowhere. And he's just standing there, not doing the thing, yeah. just standing there, <laughs> with a little leaf on his head, too. Yeah. Like an like, umbrella. Like, he's like, that's an umbrella. <laughs> and Sasuke looks over, and sees him, notices him, she's like, what the heck? Like, he's real. Mm -hmm. like, May was not lying. Oh, yeah, that was cool, too, where she's like, I saw him! Yeah. yeah. And so you get get the other umbrella that was for her dad and he's like, look, hold it over your head and you'll be okay. So he holds it over the head. And this part made me laugh was he starts like jumping kind of. Well like he, he hears it. Yeah, he, he goes, feels Ugh. Yeah, he feels the like the vibration I'm assuming or like the sound of yeah. the rain hitting the thing and he's not used to it, so whenever it happens he's like 
He like freaks out. Yeah, yeah. 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 It almost seems like he likes it. Yeah. 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 He straight and up jumps and goes, <gasps> Yeah. All, all, and of it all of it comes in. out and then but I feel like he does that too to summon the butts. Oh, uh, maybe. Maybe. Because it shakes the whole area or whatever. And you see a bus. You assume it's the dad coming. But no, it's this freaky little cat. Yeah. <laughs> this cat bus. And cat centipede, man. Dude, yeah. it's so weird. <laughs> and and the way it opens is yeah, so just, funny. Yeah, it just sided. It just opens up. Moves its flesh away. <laughs> yeah. It's so strange. And Toro gets in there and... And he's straight up cheesing when he gets in too. He's yeah. just <laughs> And then leave. <laughs> And then you see the actual bus show up, and the dad's in there, he's like, oh, my missed the train, so I had to be waiting for the next bus, sorry I'm late, he must have been worried. And that's where Nick, like Nick says, she freaks out, I saw him, I saw him, I saw him, he he's real, he's real. And then he lets him go back home. And before Toro leaves, they give him, they give Satsuke a, um, a little bag. A little bag. And oh, so it, is it like it leaves? Was, it was leaves tied like, together yeah. with some grass. Yeah. And it ends up being all acorns. Acorns? Yeah. And that's something that they've been finding the whole time mm -hmm. since the beginning of the movie. And they just go home and plant them. And it was just super cool to see the way that Toro inter interacts. And he's kind of awkward. Yeah. So he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. He's just. He doesn't know how to interact with people. Yeah. And, I don't know, I like it with Super Cube. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I also have to say, I also love the reveal here of Totoro. And, like, I believe, like, it's a shot of, um, the camera's, like, up here, and we see, like, the from the inside of the umbrella, but it's cutting off, like, where the mud is at. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, we hear footsteps coming up, and then we just see, like, a claw. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, like, on this, like, big gray hand, and then, like, you see claws here. And you're immediately, like, Oh, there he, there he is, there's Totoro. And yeah. then you kind of look up and then it's a bigger arm. And then he starts like scratching his belly yeah, a like, little bit. Like, like, it's just standing there and then it cuts away and you get that iconic like cover. Where she's, where she's there. Where she's standing right there and he's just kind of like standing That's there. That's the most like, iconic. Leaf on his head. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just super cute. Love that whole scene. Too. Yeah, this leads into mine when they go and plant the acorns. This is my last favorite scene. I enjoyed the, the animation here. They plant the seeds, and it's May's job to watch it while Sasuke's at school, and she's sitting there watching it, and it's not grown. Days go by, no nothing is sprout, and they're getting really discouraged. And we learn all this from a, a, a letter that Sasuke's writing to the mom. Uh, and she's watching it and watching it and watching it, and one night, they wake up and they see uh, Totoro and his little family members just jumping on over it, yeah. doing little jumps, and they're like, oh, what the heck? So they go out there and join them, and then Totoro starts to like do this like, almost like a like, seance. Like dance thing. It's yeah. just going, ooh, ooh. And the trees start to slowly pop out, slowly grow, and then just like all merge together. You get this massive, massive growth, like this tree. Yeah, they, they call the other one that's on that mountain the camphor tree. Yep. And it turns into that like right over their house. Yeah, it looked really cool. Yeah. And it seemed to me, because didn't they say, they went to the tree and they said, Please protect our family. Yeah. And they, you know, they're paying their respects to it. Yeah. So it almost was a symbol of like, they're going to be protected. They're, yeah. they're deemed good people. Yeah. Uh, but just the animation here I thought was awesome. Yeah. Just to see all those trees just. And then you also have to think about it because the dad's still awake. Yeah. And you're like, Dad, how are you not looking like this? <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that's why I kind of all calls into question what's real here yeah. or what's just their imagination. Yeah. Um, it's super funny too whenever. I, I was so thrown for a loop whenever he, Totoro like spins throws that, that top yeah. and it's just spinning and everyone, everyone's staring at it and I, meanwhile I'm looking at it too and I'm like, what is he doing? Like, yeah. Is he just playing a game with them? Like I, I'm not sure and then he hops on it and they start like T-posing yes. like, <laughs> up into the sky and start flying around okay. and all this stuff. Were you terrified that they were going to fall off? No, yeah. I wasn't thinking they were going to fall. Dude, I was. Really? I was. I was like... You're hanging on to this bear thing. They're literally just your bare hands, and you're going like fr freaking 100 feet in the sky. I thought, I, I was like, oh, for sure something bad is gonna happen. Because nothing really, like, I was waiting for that, like, 
oh, what's the what's the problem? Yeah, Where's the, the climax? Finish. What's the what's gonna happen? And it's it's just simply not that kind of movie. Yeah. But the whole time I was waiting for it, that's why I was like, oh, is this the moment? What's gonna happen? Yeah. Uh, that's why I was biting my nails. But yeah, it was cool. They were just out there playing those flutes. <laughs> it was it was terrible. I, I think it maybe this isn't a good analogy because in that movie he does fall out of the sky with him in his hands. But I immediately think of like uh, one movie I loved as a kid was The Iron Giant. Mm -hmm. And like how I always, like I would immediately always feel safe with The Iron Giant uh -huh. and like know that he would protect me. And so like whenever he's like, you know, whenever Hogarth is with him and um, you know, he's like riding on the shoulder or like when they're like flying, mm -hmm. um, you know, Hog Hogarth is always protected and is always like, you know, he's never falling. And so, it, me as a kid, I'm always like, well, obviously, like they're not gonna fall. Oh, yeah. You know, like protecting. thinking like that's his protector. Uh, like you yeah. know, like he's gonna make sure that he's always safe. And I felt like that was what they were trying to go for with Totoro. Yeah, and I think they succeeded. Yeah, but that's that's, that's how I feel like with um, Bajorn from uh, um, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I feel like he never got me. Bajorn? Oh, uh, the robot. Oh, what's that fool's name? Tobor. 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 Bajor. Oh, that's close. <laughs> Tobor. 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 What the heck is Bajorn for? I know that's something. B B J O R N. Isn't that Bjorn? something? Bjorn. Bjorn. That's <laughs> the most recent movie. Probably is uh, oh gosh, The Northman. Yeah, maybe. Bjorn. <laughs> I thought you were trying to say that, or like the singer Bjork. Oh, he's no. searching it. He's searching it, man. Tell me it's from the north. Bjorn? No, it's just a, it's a king. A Scandinavian king. For the 12th and 13th century. <laughs> this guy pulled that out of the hat. <laughs> <laughs> he talked to his ancestors for that one, dude. That's funny. Oh, I thought that was what his name was. Tobar. Tobar. What, what does he say when he goes, I'm free? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're talking about George Lopez. That's the name you're going for. Yeah. What is it from? The Northman, I swear to you, is from the Northman. It's not. Search up Northman cast. Vikings. It's from the show The Vikings. Okay. I've never seen that show. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Uh, you know who I think of? I think of Baymax. Oh, uh, okay. because yeah. he. Well, they didn't talk about Baymax. Dude, I'm so excited about No, but I, I get that same feeling where, you know, they're freaking flying through San. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, San Fran, Tokyo, or something like that? San Fran, Tokyo. Tokyo. And they're flying through doing barrel rolls, but I, I never think to myself, whoa, whoa, watch out. I always think, that, yeah, that's Baymax. He's, he's the protector. He's not going to fall. Yeah. So it's similar. I, I can see what you're going for. Big Hero 6 is on the come. That's what I'm saying right here. Good movie. All right. So that's it for favorite scenes. That's it. We'll go ahead and move on to best quote. Which yeah. I will say, I don't have should. any. Yeah, this movie is not very quotable. Yeah, you know? there's not really. Unless you want to scream Totoro at the top of your list. That's what I was I honestly was contemplating on doing that. Because whatever he, he does. Tro -tro -tro -tro. And it, but it's less than that. Like, it's almost non uh, eligible. Yeah. Like, you're like, what? what legible. Yeah. Legible. What is it? You know what I mean? Indistinct. You're, yeah, you can't, you're like, what? Can't make that what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no favorite quotes from me here. Okay. Come out, saying. come out wherever you are. Um, if we don't have any best quotes, then let's get into Brummo's. Yeah. Dude, my first Brummo is when they get to the house. And they're already breaking it. Yeah, dude, dude. I, man, I immediately, when I saw that they were like pushing that, that thing, and they're going to topple and they're like, oh, look, all the paint's falling off. If I was a dad, I would I'd be like, like stop! Like, <laughs> you're going to break it! I wouldn't like, yell. Like, I would be I would yelling at them, dude. <laughs> Not only that, like, I don't want them to break it, but also I don't want them to get hurt. Yeah. Like, it would collapse on them and hurt them or something. I want to see you get mad just to, as a dad. <laughs> no, oh, dude. Uh, and untapped rage will will get pulled out of me, especially when it comes to my kids, dude. Because I want to make sure that they're okay. But yeah. But also you want to make sure your house doesn't get damaged. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And if they're gonna be over there just going, <laughs> pushing it and stuff and everything, be like, oh look, I'm gonna be like, oh dude, you got another thing coming. Yeah. Uh, my first bro moment was during that bath scene that we had just talked about. Yeah. <laughs> And it just took me by surprise. I just got to say it. And and, and I and I, I which part? That, 
Okay. I'll get into it. I'll get into it. So <laughs> He's I, gotta lay it out. Because first. I like that it goes into it, it builds into like a very heartfelt, sweet moment where they share this, you know, bonding moment with one another. Where they learn that they don't have to be afraid of anything. Yeah. Especially with their dad around. But before that, um, you know, it just cuts to this this shot, this like overhead aerial shot. And um, previously we get shown the bathroom and it's like, you know, this whole like tile looking room and there's like these two little tubs. Um, that you fill water with, and you, know, you take your baths in there and stuff, and you know, you're, you're good after that. Like there's there's obviously no showers or yeah. anything around here at this time. But um, the the specific shot that I'm talking about is like when it's right overhead, and you see them. They're all taking baths at the same time, um, and Satsuki is sitting on the ground. She's like covered in soap, and she's like on her knees, and. Um, the dad is sitting in the bathtub, looking like a rotisserie chicken. Seriously, like, he's like, like he's literally he's, spread legs open. Are, legs are spread <laughs> up, spread open. He looks like he looks like he's doing yeah. YMCA. Yeah, with his like, knees. Because <laughs> <laughs> if she wasn't there, if she was not there, you would see full on genitalia. You would see dog in the water. Yeah. Full of sausage in the water. Exactly, bro. <laughs> yeah. When I saw that, I was like. Oh yeah, oh. and it was one thing that took me by surprise. Like I saw it and I was like, "This is <laughs> this is a movie? This is G-rated? What yeah. is this?" And then you know we see May obviously covering him, but yeah, it was just strategically placed. Yeah, I saw it and I was just like, "What the heck?" And I I started laughing at it and I was like, "That's so strange." They decided to put this in the movie. Yeah, like, yeah, that was a big draw for me as well. That was cut off her. Uh. Um... Oh, I, my! One of my bro moments is we didn't really talk much about the kid. I don't know his name. Yeah, I don't know his name. Is this one? He's so freaking awesome. I don't know his name. I don't know. I'm pretty. His name. Kansa. They say it, but I just didn't write it down. I'm looking at that. I it's. it's Kansa. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Probably. C a k a n t. A. Sorry. Kansa. Yes. Yeah. Kansa. Yeah. He uh. He's whole wholesome. He's like this really shy kid, and he sees them, and he's always so shy that he won't even talk to him. He runs away. Uh, but it's the scene where they're they don't have an umbrella, and he sees them, and then he goes. He doesn't even say anything. He goes. He goes. Mm, 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 and then drops it and runs. Yeah. And it's so wholesome. My bro moment is when he he goes to his house and tells his mom like, "Oh no, I just forgot it. I just forgot it." Yeah. And the mom was like, oh, you're so dumb, you, how could you forget it on a day like today? Yeah. But he's just trying to, he was just trying to do a nice thing for, for the girls. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's kind of awesome. Yeah. Uh, that was one of mine. One, I, he, no, he had pissed me off, but he made me upset. Why is he so scared of the girls? At first. Because they got cooties. Yeah, they're still young. They're still kind of like, oh, what do I say? Ooh, yeah. Cooties. I don't know. I put it down, so I'm like, bro. It's it? also you got you got new people moving in on your block. Like yeah. you're not gonna be skeptical. You don't want to be cheese muscle and go look at them. Cause I know for sure if someone moved down the street from me, I would purposely act like I'm going on a walk and make sure I walk extra slow by the house just to make sure. Just to see what it is. He's like, yeah, and I would peek through their windows too. <laughs> I would. I would, I would say what time they go to bed and what time they wake up in the morning. Yeah, I would have a whole schedule <laughs> yeah, to get you guys. <laughs> I'm not that cheese mozo. I'm cheese mozo, but I'm not that cheese mozo. You see the freaking dad sprayed out and then over the corner. If you I see, saw you that, see Abraham, like. <laughs> if I saw some guy spread eagle, I'm moving out. <laughs> uh, next one moment, for sure, cat bus. Yes, dude. The whole, like, boy. No, the moving whole. The flesh just, around. The aura of the cat bus is just creepy. It kind of looks like the Cheshire cat. Okay. Yeah, sure. A little bit with yeah. that, like, just that, massive. That big smile. Yeah. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. The cat that, like, will vanish and yeah. all that. Search it up. You know. As you soon know. as you see it, you're going to be like, oh. But, yeah, like, the whole, like, it coming up and just being like, <laughs> like, just. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like, being like this. The teeth. Dude, the cheeklets are so Dude, thick. Dude, it, it just, it, it threw me off. Yeah. And I was like. I would not oh, get on that thing, bro. See that one? Doesn't that? Yeah. But with wheels. With not wheels. even wheels, just with like eight legs. Yeah. And some some testicles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't spoil my facts. <laughs> it's too good not to. I know. That's awesome. Um, I wish that I wish you could see those things whenever it's a running. You just see them just see on the ground. <laughs> they hit the legs each time. I wish they were like detailed. 
Or like they're like propellers where like it like gave force to the wind. It goes. Hey man. Yeah. That's Did you a, say that's hey man? A, I said hey man. Oh, I thought you said hey man. That's like, the bro. extended cut. <laughs> <laughs> that's the stuff they left out. Yeah. That that cat bus is creepy. Yeah, for sure. A uh, bro moment for me was uh, so we get a call from we get a telegram from the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, this is just going to freak out because the mom's in the hospital, so they're like, it has to do with mom, she might be coming home soon, or just something wrong. So, again, Satsuki? Satsuki. Satsuki. No, it's not with an E. Satsuki. 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 I keep on You're thinking of Naruto, bro. I hate Naruto. No, I'm not. You're thinking of Naruto and Sasuke. It's Satsuki. I'm thinking about something else. Satsuki. Sorry. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, I, your, mind, your mind is going places I don't know where it's at. Sasuke? Yes. Tells... Oh, Sasuke. Yeah. Tells May to stay with Granny. Okay. <laughs> what? I just I, love that. I'm just waiting for you. Yeah, I'm ready. This is the biggest bro moment of your life. You guys are just looking at me like I'm dumb. <laughs> no. Um, and she goes, stay with Granny. Like, I gotta go call, call her dad. She's at work. I know the university's number for him. And she runs with her as well. Mm-hmm. But she gets lost, and that's the big moment for me, because she falls down, and the boy and her just keep on going. And she just she beside them. And you see them when they turn into the boy's house. And May just goes the other way. And I was like, oh, no. And that's the big moment for me, because she's not lost. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. I. It was a big moment for me, was when she gets lost, she like, goes down a couple other streets, and this is my last bro moment. She's holding this ear of corn the whole time. Yeah. Previous to that, this whole scene, she's with Granny, her and um, and Satsuki, and they're you know picking her, um, they're picking Granny's uh, crops, and Granny is telling them like, oh yeah, you know if you eat these uh, zucchinis and vegetables and stuff, like it has a, so many vitamins and uh, nutrients strong. and stuff, everything to grow strong and. You know, I'm pretty sure it will help you out even whenever you're sick. Yeah. And they start, you know, getting hopeful and they're like, Oh, like, you want, you know, what if it will make my mom feel better? She's yeah, like, oh, I, will. I bet it will. And so May is like, immediately grabs an ear of corn and is like, I'm going to give this to my mom and make her feel better. Yeah. And she's like carrying it with her the whole time. And, you know, eventually she gets lost and she's still holding this ear of corn. And she goes up this hill and encounters this goat. Like out of nowhere, <laughs> yeah. and this goat kind of comes out, and she, you know, goes to interact with it, and we get this like, this close-up shot of this goat, and it starts like bleeding <laughs> at her, and it's straight up like one of the most terrifying things in the movie. Yeah. It straight up goes, eh! <laughs> like, and, like, and you see like its teeth, and it it it, it gets creepy. Yeah. I saw it, and I was like, man, they got really detailed. Like, you know, like, it reminds me of like some of those episodes of SpongeBob where like. It'll be normal, and then you have just one random hyper scene. Hyper detail, just where it's like <laughs> hyper, yeah, like hyper detail, and it'll just be like, or like it reminds me. It always me, has like a like a crazy laugh, like a yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, or like it reminds me. What? Of like, nah. It reminds me of that was like there's like one ec- one episode of SpongeBob where like they're afraid to say the word actors, and like whenever they do it, like zooms in on someone's mouth that's like superimposed over a sponge, and it goes. Really? Yes. And I remember that so vividly for some reason. But it, it has the same feeling as that where it's like, why did that have to be put in here? Yeah. Like, and with such detail. Like, I think of the, the scene when he's holding up that Krabby Patty that's all jacked up. Yeah. And like the <laughs> fingernails. And it's yeah. so detailed. Yeah. I think yeah. of scenes like that. Yeah, for sure. Or even the scene that I think of was when um, Swerver had that dump truck, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's eating all those Krabby Patties. Yeah. Oh, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, that's my last bro moment for this Yeah, film. my last one is just uh, Sasuke saying, you want mom to die? Oh, to, to me. Yeah. I was like, absolutely, I, I, I get it. You absolutely, you want her to die? No, I'm just saying, like, I get it that you can't really hold in your emotions, especially when it comes to, like, your parent dying. Yeah. But, man, she's so young. She's like, yeah. mom's going to die! Yeah. Like, dang, just chill a little bit. Dang. Seriously. Uh, that was my last one, though. Yeah, alright, well, we spoke all Okay. Yeah, move on. If that's it for the bro moments, let's go ahead and get into some facts with the bros. Yeah, let me hit you with the budget. And, um, so it was 30, 37, 3 million, 
$3.7 million to make this. And what I found on IMDb is it was a budget when they re-released it again in 2018. Yeah. Mm. So for opening weekend, it made $539,000. Um, gross for US and Canada made $2.2 million. And gross worldwide made $30.5 million. Holy cow. And that was supposed to be released in, two, in September 30th, 2018. Okay. Yeah. They so keep, I have, they keep. Right? They're still yeah. making money. Yeah. Every year. They, I think they do like they, a, they they do like a whole like they yeah. do like a couple like weekends where it's like a Ghibli fest. Yeah. yeah. Especially at Regal yeah. where like they they play like a Ghibli film like once every week or something. It's something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they, these movies are still producing revenue. Yeah. I have something actually in regards to the the box office earnings for its original release. Mm. So the movie, it additionally did not do well, and it, it didn't even break even until about two years after the release when stuffed dolls based on Totoro hit the shelves. Oh, just the merch. Yeah. The it, merch carried it. And it, it that's what put it over uh, the budget and helped it earn money. Oh, and man. then, you know, it had staying power, obviously, yeah. and it re-releases and all that stuff. That's cool. I have one that's kind of similar like that, and it's about a plushie, and so in Toy Story 3, you can actually see a photo of plushie in one of the stills. Oh, and, wow. And okay. of, of all the stuffed animals, I believe it's, I want to think it's with lasso, like, right in the middle, mm -hmm. but you can see them, see Toad Road right there. Yeah, it's one of, it's not Andy's toys, it's that new, what's her name? It's, uh, uh Bonnie. Bonnie, yeah, she's Bonnie. In, in Bonnie's room, he's there. Okay. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, in regards to the the initial theatrical release in Japan, it's a movie you talked about often, it was double featured with Grave of the Fireflies, mm. uh, as the film was believed to not be, or to be too big a financial risk to be standalone. Oh wow. So they released it with Grave of the Fireflies. Okay, I, I, that makes sense too, I think, because I have yet to watch Grave of the Fireflies, I want to, but I hear it's like... Awesome. I hear it's awesome, but I also hear it's one of the saddest, like, Studio Ghibli films. So I would only hope that they would like play Grave of the Fireflies first and then and the my neighbor Totoro like, oh. to like leave and be like, oh man, it feels so much better. <laughs> <laughs> like, if they did it opposite and like they made you feel real great and then played a downer of a movie and afterwards. You left the theaters just like Yeah. Yeah, that'd be kinda of sad. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought that was pretty interesting. It is. Um, I actually have one in regards to um, just how this film was made in general and how it was written. So this film was actually partially autobiographical. Yeah. When Hayao Miyazaki and his brothers were children, his mother actually suffered from spinal tuberculosis for nine years, and she spent much of her time hospitalized. It's implied, yet never revealed in the film, that Satsuki and May's mother also suffers from tuberculosis as well. He once said that the film would have been too painful for him to make it if the two protagonists were boys instead of girls. Wow. Mm. Yeah, when I had read that, I was like, man, because we don't know her sickness at all, but tuberculosis. It's crazy yeah, that he, yeah. he, like, you know, I feel like it might even have been, like, therapeutic yeah. to, for him to write about this. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, something that I have of a director that we have to like and we talk about often, of um, Robert Eggers. Um, so he includes this film as in his great list, and he even went on to say that it's one of the most beloved family to movie films. Is it is it Robert Eggers or Roger Ebert? I wrote it wrong. Roger Ebert. Roger, because Roger Ebert, he's like a renowned film critic. Yeah. My bad. But yeah, I, 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 I would, it sounds like Roger Ebert to include something like this in his list, which is fitting. So. Roger Ebert, okay, I'm sorry, I just, I, um... They're very similar. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you flip the, I think it's the Robert and Roger and then Ebert and Eggers. It's like... It's like two letters yeah. that you just gotta flip. It's Same. <laughs> so the B, B and the G. And the G's. Okay, if that's it for the facts, do you guys have any other ones? Oh yeah, cat bus has testicles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. When I saw the picture of that thing, I was like, it really does. Yeah, right. It does some kind of genitalia. <laughs> I don't know. It's something. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't that, bro, there, there was some, some big... <laughs> no, 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 don't say it, don't say no, it. No, 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 but you know what I'm thinking, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Just look up that still. You'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, 
That's incredible. Yeah. Um, so if that's it for the fact, what didn't work for this film? I have a couple things. Okay. Um, first and foremost, this is definitely a kid movie, and you can tell the kid. It's not necessarily bad, but I don't think it's a movie for like us to put on and be like, I'm gonna watch this and I'm gonna enjoy it. Does that make sense? It's not like I said. It's not uh, necessarily bad that it's a kids movie, um, but you can tell it's a kids movie, not and it's. I think it's geared towards more children. Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely geared towards kids, but I wouldn't. I don't think I would go as far as to say that like a, you couldn't put it on and enjoy it as an adult. Yeah, no. Well, it's I enjoy definitely. It. I think this movie is definitely rewatchable. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. And and you know if you're ever feeling in the in the mood for like something, like warming and like comforting, I could definitely. Warrant putting yeah, this on, this will, feeling that. Um, this will but I, I think I think what I'll try to hit off of a little bit with what doesn't work for this film for me off of yours is that this is a it's a children's movie with no plot. Yeah. <laughs> like there's there's no there's no antagonists. There is no. Um, there's no jokes. There's, yeah. There's, there's no, no. There's nothing. There's there's no catchphrases. There's no. There's nothing. There's nothing really here to like. Unpack and sort of in, in, you know, find any substance to it. I think. Yeah. Like, I, and one one big thing I know with a lot of Studio Ghibli films is like there's always a moral of the story, or there's yeah. always like a big theme. Um, I know like a lot of them, uh, specifically like Ponyo, has very like heavy environmental themes and like shows like how polluted the ocean is yeah. and and stuff like that. And then it also has themes of like finding out who you are and being true to yourself. Same, the same as Princess Mononoke, honestly. Yeah. It's a lot about like environmental stuff and how, mm -hmm. how we impact the world. Yes. Um, which, I think this one, and that's why I said this, Princess Mononoke is similar to this one, because I feel like this one, it's very opaque, but it, it also has that like relationship between humanity and nature. Yes. Because they always have these very like stable shots of like water dropping in a river. Yes. Or, you know, the big landscape. Yeah. So there's very much like of this peace with nature. Yes. Um, but it's not as pr prominent as some of the other ones. So yeah. I, I get what you're saying. It's kind of, you watch it and you're kind of like, what was the deeper? What was the, what are they trying to tell us? Yeah. Yeah, so it, when, I, when I watch this movie, it definitely won't be for like anything in regards to like story. Yeah. It yeah. would just be to like watch it for the spectacle that it is rather than looking for something in it that has any anything of like deeper value yeah yeah and that kind of hits on my next thing was um, i wrote down that i feel like there's things missing in this movie um i wish i could know more of total Rook. i wish I, I could know why and how he got there um i wish i knew more backstory about the mother um so i just i wish i could have got more backstory as a whole of the whole movie mm. or the whole um, family and the story of Hura, yeah. how he got there. You want lore, is what you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah. I I almost wonder too, like if this was something that I was thinking or like trying to make sense of when it came to, um, like why the girls were seeing these spirits and stuff. And I had almost thought that like maybe it was like sort of like a coping mechanism oh, for, or something. Yeah, that's one like, of my thoughts too. Where like you know they they have this struggle with you know not having their mom in the home and their mom being very sick so they're using these you know spirits and stuff and everything and taking their mind off of you know the perils of what's going on in their current life yeah. and masking it with things like Toro or the suit sprites or the spirits and um, you know other you know little spirits and yeah. uh, everything that's going on in this world so yeah that's what I thought I was surprised Totoro is not really in it no like, at all he's probably in for at max 10 minutes it's very very light on the Totoro action I was yeah. surprised because he he seems to be like the biggest mascot for Studio he Ghibli is the mascot yeah so it's like I was surprised because I figured he'd be in it quite a bit yeah but he kind of is only only has two significant scenes yeah so I was like oh that's interesting what well, uh you know one of the, I've said it so many times on this podcast, I don't really like slice of life movies. <laughs> and this is kind of the, the definition of that. Um, the story structure here, we've talked about a little bit earlier, but it, it's uh, not one that I genuine like tend to, tend to lean towards. It's more of like, a, you know, you just follow along in this slice of their life and you get yeah. to see 
just how they how they do day to day yeah day to day stuff and it's weird because I caught myself I was watching uh, Better Call Saul and I thought to myself I was like man how would this show look if we just didn't get the most exciting parts of this guy's life like <laughs> him just showering or him eating yeah. we don't ever see that it's always just the most jam packed and I was like yeah. oh that would suck that reminds me of I immediately default to oh it sucks. That reminds me of the Before Show dude, when he talks about his TV show. Yeah, and it's and just like the mundane stuff. Yeah, and he was like, that's like the beauty of life, it's the mundane <laughs> things. And, it, and everyone was like, no, that would, that that would suck. suck. He was like, but <laughs> like, 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 well, like, well, think about it, like, what if one day, like, he did something real crazy? That'd be a great episode to get everybody talking about it. Yeah. True. Yeah. It's and, just, I, I'm so ingrained in Western, Western story. Culture. Yeah, yeah, Western story structures of like, Oh, what's next? Yeah. That it kind of it was really hard for me to engage with this movie because I was like, I was waiting for something and it never came, but it never was gonna come because that's not the story yeah. that they're trying to it's tell. Not the, it's not the point. Yeah, it's not the the structure they went with either. So it's like, yeah, I kind of was uh, hyping myself up a little too much, and yeah, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I just don't like sci sci films. They just don't yeah. connect with me at all. Yeah. Um, so that's something that just didn't really work for me. Okay. What, anything else that didn't work? It's better for me. Okay. I think same here as well. Okay. Uh, so let's get into what did work then. I think something that, for all of us across the board, cinematography and yeah. animation. Oh, hundred percent. I put it too. I put. I truly like the colors and the animation. It doesn't seem like a movie that was made in nineteen eighty. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because of how beautiful it looks and just the attention to detail, even though it's a nineteen eighty eight film, but yeah. I still notice little things. Mm -hmm and be like whoa yeah one of the things i really enjoyed is how they portray motion with these like they, they're very still but when they're on the train or on the the, the truck you know how they're in the back of the truck yeah. and they're hiding from the cops and all that well it shows it shows the movement and it's kind of like real life where the the background is moving very slowly and then the middle ground is moving just a little bit faster and then the foreground like the one real close to us is moving fast yeah and that's kind of like how we perceive motion yes and the fact that they decided to show that in this hand-drawn 2d art style i was yeah. like this is so cool yeah this is so cool yeah i i enjoy just every aspect of the film visually yeah. and what they what they decide to show on screen as well as how they show it the colors that are used the the setup of certain shots and all that stuff it's it's beautiful. Um, I also do have to say I really enjoy how this movie just leaves you with a feeling of happiness. Yes. And it feels it leaves you with this feeling of like like I said like a warm embrace like you know you just you saw a friend and you hugged them and you haven't had, <laughs> you know you haven't held them in a long time so you you, know, you hug them and you're just like man I missed you. You know, it, it just feels good. It feels good to be in that moment. Yeah, and I, I kind of wrote some, something similar to that, and I said, this is a movie. This movie is a movie that will make you smile, and I said, I would definitely show my kids this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I have any, of course, but this movie is a movie that you can throw on and smile. Yeah. Or throw on and sleep. Yeah. I said it in somewhat of a good way. It's a yeah. very nice movie to just... Just relax. Dude. Yeah, just to relax. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I also think the voice acting is pretty good. I, I like the dub. I agree with everyone. I think they did a fantastic job. It's Dakota. Uh, Dakota Fanning and uh, Ellie, Ellie Fanning? Yeah, Ellie Fanning. Okay. They're both sisters. So I thought that was cool. They kind of have that charisma already together. They're just sisters in real life. Might as well show it through, through these other characters. Yeah. Um, I can't say much for the, the subtitled ones, but I've heard they're also great. Okay. So. Perfect. And one thing I've already brought up is I definitely think this movie is rewatchable. Yeah. Um, I could see myself returning to it or, you know, wanting to rewatch it just to get to that feeling of just like, oh man, this just feels nice to just I, be here. I feel like with Studio Ghibli, like, it's going to sound like super basic, but um, on a cold, rainy day, I know we don't get those that often here, you could just throw on a Studio Ghibli movie and feel warm and cozy. And just relax. Yeah. I was gonna ask you, uh, the soundtrack. Did you guys like the soundtrack? The soundtrack was actually there's so much. Remember this? It's it was very catchy. Yeah. I I like that a lot. Um, I think there were some some gems in there. There was one song that played. I think like, I think it was whenever they were uh, flying around the tree. Uh huh. 
and it was a bop. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like it, it came on, and I was like, mm, I said, what? Uh, bopping my head around yeah. and all that stuff. And it, yeah, it was it was fire. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, if that's it for what did work, then who wins this movie? I put May. Oh. Okay. I truly think of her when I think of this movie because um, of how cute she is and how she just, you see her little personality just shine yeah. in this little movie. And I just, I think specifically of this part where she sees the mini Totoro and she gets super excited because she um, found something new. And it's just, it made me smile when I saw that. So anytime I think about this movie, I'm going to think of that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, I kind of want to say the dad. Oh, yeah. I don't have his name. I, I don't have his name. And I, I hate not being able to credit him. Um, Let's pull it up. It's, it's one, it's, the hard thing about IMDb is that it's giving me both the, uh, the Japanese people who, who've done it and also. Uh, so I don't know. Like, I get, there's so many names here. I can't, I don't know which one is which. But I think he, he wins it for me only because I just, he's a good dad. He, well, his last, their last name is Kusakabe, so it's got to be Tatsuo. Tatsuo? Tatsuo. Okay, Tatsuo. Well, do you have his actual name? The... Um, the guy that does the... The... Japanese dub? No, the subtitle. Well, oh, the, the dub, yeah. Because he... I don't know, For I just feel like... his. I feel like his voice was kind of perfect. He was this like really... Tim Daly. Tim Daly is the guy who did it? Yeah, and then they just call him Professor Kusakabe. Kusakabe, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, I liked him. He had this like very warm tone to his voice. He was very welcoming. You very... are a voice person. He was nice. I, I enjoyed it. So yeah, I think he wins it for me. I'm also going to say May. Oh, I, really? Yeah, I really like May. I, she's just so cute. And I think what I, when I really started to like her, was at the bus stop scene, seeing her in the little raincoat and boots. And like, She's so you know, like, cute. That's the only thing that fits her. Like it's just raincoats, and then you see a little bit of her ankles, and then boots. Yeah. And she's just like kind of standing She's there. so cute. I was just like, she's so precious. I just want to hug her. Like yeah. Okay. So, and I, I I do like the you know the storyline that she goes through you know throughout the film as well. Like, I do think you get to see more of her than anybody else in this movie, as well. Mm. I, I don't know. I, I would I would argue that it's a both like May and Satsuki, and that like they yeah, both you, get shown pretty you, deeply. I think. I think agree with you there, but I feel like you get shown more of what May goes through than Satsuki Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You definitely have more solo scenes with May. Yes. Because Satsuki is at school. Yeah. Okay. Well, if who wins the film is up, then what are some themes for this? I didn't write one down. I didn't know what to write down. I did not either. Because I couldn't find a moral of the story. Or no, I couldn't. A unifying theme no. or anything for this one. Like I said, it's it, it kind of our relationship with nature and family. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> I, I, yeah it's that. just, yeah, I don't know. Just to find peace with that and use your imagination to, to block sorrow. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Or just to have that, I mean, they always say that childlike wonder. Yeah. It really does, it does wonders. Yeah, for um, sure. So it's, I guess, to not lose that. Yeah. Well, if that's it for the themes, then, what do we rate in this film? I'm looking at you. <laughs> don't go, you you picked it, you... Uh, no, first. no, I'm... I'm going seven. Seven? Yes. I'm going six. Okay. I went eight. Okay. Wow. I like it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it too. It's yeah. definitely not my favorite um, Studio Ghibli film, but it's still got some merit. To it's it. great. It's it's good, but it's just not my kind of movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, so six. But yeah, I think anyone who watches it, I mean, I know this movie's universally loved. Mm -hmm. So people, it has a heart. It has places in their heart for it. Yeah. So. 100%. Hopefully they don't get too mad. <laughs> Anyways, that's it, huh? Yes, that is. Man. So if you guys stuck all the way to the end, we do appreciate it. Um, we appreciate everybody watching on YouTube and listening on the audio platforms, whether that be on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google Podcasts. Um, you can also check out the episodes where we like distribute our podcasts through Podbean there as well. So if you check them out there too, that's perfect.
Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we've been seeing a lot of growth on the YouTube channel, which we are really excited about. Um, if you you know like watching the videos there or watching the podcast there, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, also, turn on the bell notification so that way you're notified whenever uh, the uploads come out. They usually get uploaded around 9.15-ish every Wednesday. So um, just make sure that you're tuning into all those and giving us some love and showing people that, you know, this is something to check out, something worth watching. So, yeah, for sure. Um, as always, you, know, you can always check out all of the episode descriptions and get in contact with us either through our Instagram or our email. Um, leave us, you know, constructive criticisms or do that through a rate and review on the audio platforms as well. But other than that, I think You're that's right. everything. What so, have you got for us, Isaiah? So it's my pick next week, and we're going to be doing a hard one. <laughs> 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 that's so, like a good 180 for this. We're doing a big 180 from this like cute, cutesy film to a, a gritty film that's uh, type that it. I love. Man. Ready I, to type it. I have. I've only watched it once, and it was I watched it by myself one day. Alexa was gone doing something on a weekend, and I was like, dude, you know what? I bought this movie, I've been wanting to watch it, it's been on Netflix forever, even though they just took it off recently. Oh, did they? Yeah. Uh, What's it on? It's on Paramount Plus. Oh, good, I have it. It is There Will Be Blood. Ooh, it is I've never Paul seen it. Thomas Anderson. Yes, it's going to be the second Paul Thomas Anderson movie that we're going to be doing. PTA. And I, I'm really excited to rewatch this because the, the first time I watched it and it ended, I immediately text you guys and said, yeah. There Will Be Blood is a 10 out of 10. <laughs> like, like, I understand why everybody says that it's a masterpiece. Like, it's it's really great. I enjoyed every second of it. Daniel Day-Lewis kills yes. everything that he does on screen. Like, yeah. every second he's on screen, it, it blows me 2007 this came out. Yes, this came out around the same time as, like, No Country for Old Men. That's crazy. Uh, like, it was a big year for cinema around 2007. Nice. And, um... Yeah, I'm really excited to, to re-watch this. Um, I'm excited for Abraham to check it out for the first time. I, I think it's a, it. it's a rewatch for you, too. It will be, yeah, my second time watching it. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty hyped, and I'm excited to see what you guys think about it. So. Yeah, I'm excited just to see the visual. I just I can't forget that that guy just absolutely covered in blood and oil. Yes. It just You just see like nothing but white eyes. Yes. It looks incredible. Yeah. So I'm excited to return to it. Okay. Me too. So, um, if you have Paramount Plus, go stream it there. If not, you will have to rent it somewhere else. I think it also may be on Amazon Prime if you have like a premium subscription or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but if not, uh, give it a rent or pick up a copy somewhere. I think it's definitely worth your money. So, um, yeah, as always, uh, check out that movie and then come back next week and hear what to say about There Will Be Blood. Okay. This has been the Thumbnails Podcast. Thank you. And good night. Good night. Good night.